The FX 8350, 50. which is just a faster version of the FX 8300. In fact, all of the FX 8 and 9 series chips are basically the same chip. An FX 8300, 8320, 8350, 9550, all of those are basically, excuse me, 9590, all of those are the same 8-core CPU, or sort of 8-core. Four cores, eight threads, depending upon how you... It's a weird hybrid chip. I don't really want to get into the history of what the FX chips were. They were an interesting idea and an interesting design that never got... It never got enough market share for the software developers of the world and for Windows to ever really adjust to it and to be optimized for it. It's better today than it used to be. And frankly, in some regards, an FX 8300 today has aged better than the original i5 chips that they were price competitive with eight years ago. When the uh, FX chips first launched back in 2012, they were competing against like an i5-2400 or an i5-2500K. Okay. The i5-2500K is a four-core, four-thread, unlocked CPU from the Sandy Bridge architecture. I had one in 2011. I built an i5-2500K and very quickly... The four threads drove me nuts, which is why two years later I replaced it with a i7 Haswell chip, the 4770, because yes. I, I wanted my eight threads back. Correct. That was a mistake. Yes. It was not worth saving the 100 bucks because it forced an early upgrade. Correct. Buy all the CPU you can afford because changing your CPU involves building a new computer a lot of the time. It does. In any case. So the FX chips have four, no, they have eight integer units. And they have four full floating point units that can be divided into eight half floating point units. I'm paraphrasing. Eight it's a little more complicated. So okay. they essentially can do eight integers and four floating points at the same time. And every other integer unit shares certain cache and compute resources. Okay. So for certain functions, certain specific functions, it really does have eight cores and can process eight integer functions at once. But it can't really prefetch cache and do floating point eight times. So it's like half the chip is four cores and half the chip is eight cores. Oh. If software had been truly, if Intel had gone that direction too instead of hyperthreading, if if the if Windows and all of our games had been written with that CPU design in mind, yes. then it would actually be fine. There's nothing inherently wrong with that except for the fact that nothing ever really got written for it. And since games, especially 3D stuff, uses a lot of floating point stuff, it kind of turned into a four-core chip or a really slow eight-core eight chip. chip. <laughs> because if the floating point units have to split their work yes. across eight threads, yes. then they're basically half performance. Why, why did someone think that was a good idea? Um, that's a great question. The reason is... Because doesn't hyper-threading work better? Not really. It doesn't? Here's the thing. Transistor budgets are a fixed thing. Within any given production process, within any given processor design, everything is a trade-off. If you make... And the, the first uh, bulldozer chips, they were, they were 32 nanometer in design. And so within a given square millimeter, you can fit a certain number of millions or billions of transistors. Nice round numbers. Let's say there's one billion transistors. Right. Now, as a CPU designer, you have to ask yourself, what are you going to use those transistors for? Cool. You can use them for on-chip cache. Mm -hmm. Those take transistors. Yep. You can use them for integer processing logic. And do you want to make it very basic logic or advanced logic? Mm -hmm. Here's an example. Modern chips have anywhere between 4 and 16 cores. Mm -hmm. But modern graphics cards have thousands of cores. Hmm. But the chips aren't really that much bigger. So how? Well, the answer is, is the cores in a GPU are very small, dumb, and stupid, and the wow. cores on a CPU are, are able to do anything. They are powerful, but limited in that they have a long pipeline and can only do... They're not as good at parallel instructions, but they're amazingly good at, at being reprogrammed internally to do anything. A GPU's cores are really good at only a few tasks. Wow but suck at everything else. Right. right tool for the job. Yes. You know, do you use a wrench or pliers? Yep. They both have a place in your tool chest. Correct. And this is why we have CPUs and GPUs. This is why we don't use our CPU for GPU functions. Mm -hmm. And it's why we don't just build a computer with the GPU and no CPU. You need the CPU. You need both. Yeah. Now, eventually, with APUs, we're kind of going there. We may eventually end up with hybrid chips that simply have 
a variety of types of cores. The Alder Lake upcoming cores, the for Big example, Little. Big Little. It's, the funny thing is the Big Little is almost kind of going back to the idea yeah. of Bulldozer, which is you have a few powerful doing units and, and a few slow this. units. And imagine that Intel could also put their new XE graphics on board. Yeah. And so they could have big cores, little cores, and GPU cores. In But by going the chiplet route, which they will ultimately end up doing because AMD was right about chiplets, mm -hmm. um, they also don't have to be the same production size. They can, for example, yeah. the very, very high performance top end cores, they can make in limited runs of their best production. Mm -hmm. And the slow cores, they could use an older process to save money. That's true. Inside a Ryzen 9 3900X, for example, yes. the two chiplets that provide the 12 cores are 7 nanometer. Mm -hmm. But the IO die and the cache is 14 nanometer. Oh. Not all of modern Zen 2 chips are 14. That's true. That's the true. IO is, and expect. When they go to five nanometer, it'll be picture the five nanometer core, the 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 new Zen four cores, mm -hmm. not Zen three, but Zen four, four will be five nanometer. Mm -hmm. The cache might be seven or ten, and the I/O die might still be fourteen. You could end up with three different production sizes. But remember, they're individual chiplets made into a thing. But by making them smaller, that lets them manufacture them separately and test them separately, and only put good units together. Fair enough. It's really cool, actually. I'm excited. In any case, back to Bulldozer. When Bulldozer first came out, it was a good idea, but it got absolutely gobsmacked by the i5-2500K. And the reason for that was because at the time, nothing used eight cores. There was no software for it. There was no optimization for it. It took a long time for anything to happen. And so, frankly, it kind of died on the vine. I, the market share penetration of those FX chips never went anywhere. So AMD almost went out of business. It was so bad. I mean, it really was bad. Eight years later, a lot of software now uses more threads, now uses... Yes. And, and a lot of development tools have just slowly had some FX development just sort of squeezed in there over time just due to the fact that they eventually sold enough of them and eventually a few tweaks got put in and things improved. Right. Whereas today, a four-core, four-thread chip is actually very hard limiting. Go try to play Battlefield Five multiplayer Call of Duty Warzone on a four-core, four-thread i5-2500K and tell me it's a nice, pleasant, smooth experience. <laughs> it's horrific. It's useless. You can do it. But anybody who says, yeah, I play it, it's fine. There's no problem whatsoever, simply has never used anything better because they don't, with respect, know what they're talking about. Um... An FX8300 will average a lower average frame rate than an i5-2500K. But on modern games today, yep. its minimums and its smoothness, its frame pacing will be much better. Huh. So if you look at a frame time delivery yep. chart, it'll be a much nicer chart, just a lower chart. Mm. Okay. Ghost Recon Breakpoint. Yes. The Division 2. Yes. Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Yes. Actually play fine on an FX8300. Okay. They just don't play very fast. You will struggle, regardless of your GPU choice, to break 60 frames per second on an FX8300 in those games. Even if you bring the settings to low? It's not a graphics setting issue. That's a graphics card. It doesn't matter. It can't generate the world. It can't draw the triangles. It can't build the universe. The games are too advanced. Like, so there's nothing in the settings you can do? No. no. Your CPU is too slow. But 50 to 60 frames per second with reasonable frame deliveries, not great. I've played Ghost Recon Breakpoint on an FX8300. It's, I would take, if, I, if the only two choices on Earth to mm -hmm. play Ghost Recon Breakpoint were an FX8300 or an i5-2500K, I'd take the FX8300. Okay. Because I know what happens when you play Ghost Recon Breakpoint on a four-core, four-thread CPU. It's non-functional. I have a video on that. You do. I did that on a four-core, four-thread oh, Ryzen yeah. chip yeah. with no hyper-threading. Mm. There were sections where the game would just skip and lag. And there was, I, I showed this in the video, where I was trying to drive in a truck. And the game just froze for a second, and then it would go a little longer, and then it would hitch for half a second. The hitches were so bad, it's not playable. Bad. That doesn't sound fun. It's not. It's, it's, 
It's the wrong tool for the job. And to anybody still using a four core, four thread chip, see, but again, world of warships, world of tanks, you'd be like, what's the problem, man? I game all the time, everything's great. What games? Well, I don't play that Ghost Recon crap. Well, then you're fine. Exactly. That's fine. <laughs> so to answer the question, um, FX 8350 or 8300 or any of the FX chips, if you have one and it's all you can afford, you'll want to be a little bit choosy in your game choices, but it does work today. However, the only people who should still be using an FX chip at this point are people who are insanely budget constrained. There's no bad products, there's bad prices. Yes. If somebody offered me a AM3 Plus FX motherboard for $5 and an FX8300 for $5 and some DDR3 RAM for it for $5, I'd be like, can I have 100 at that price, please? Because that would be amazing. Right. But that's not the case. No, but if I'm just saying there is a price at where they, it's not useless, it's just... With Ryzen 5 3600 so cheap and used Ryzen 5 1600 so cheap. Yeah, you can't grab it so easy when it's way over there, can you? Yeah, it's all right. Okay, Mr. Neto. I think. Was that a complete answer? I think so. Mr. Neto. <laughs> Thank you.